Should you get a micro ATX, mini ITX, or standard ATX motherboard for your upcoming PC build? And what about extended ATX motherboards? If you're looking to build a new computer, one of the most important components you'll need to purchase is a motherboard. However, not all motherboards are created the same. While motherboards vary in how much they cost, what CPUs they support, and the kinds of features they come with, they also vary in size. There are a handful of standardized sizes for motherboards, and we refer to these as form factors. The common motherboard form factors are standard ATX, micro ATX, mini ITX, and extended ATX. And in this video, I'm going to go over what the main differences are between the standard motherboard form factors, and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a better idea of which motherboard form factor would be the best for you. The most obvious difference between standard ATX, micro ATX, mini ITX, and extended ATX motherboards are their dimensions. An extended ATX motherboard measures in at 12 inches tall by up to 13 inches wide and can hold up to eight DIMM slots, those are the slots that memory gets installed to, but commonly come with four DIMM slots. A standard ATX motherboard measures in at 12 inches tall by 9.6 inches wide and typically comes with four DIMM slots. A micro ATX motherboard measures in at 9.6 inches tall by up to 9.6 inches wide and some micro ATX motherboards come with four DIMM slots and others only come with two DIMM slots. And a mini ITX motherboard measures in at 6.7 inches tall by 6.7 inches wide and come with two DIMM slots. So micro ATX motherboards can be the same width as standard ATX motherboards, but they are a couple of inches shorter. And as you can see here, they can also be a bit more narrow as well. In fact, this micro ATX motherboard measures in at 9.6 inches tall and 8.75 inches wide. Mini ITX motherboards, on the other hand, are shorter in both height and width when compared to micro ATX motherboards. Despite their smaller size and thus less space for features as a result, their miniature form factor is actually their main selling point as many users want to build compact systems. Extended ATX motherboards are the same height as standard ATX motherboards, but they can be up to a few inches wider. With the extra width, extended ATX motherboards can house more DIMM slots, feature more ports in general, and typically come with more heat sinks on average. Just note though that extended ATX motherboards also require cases that are specifically designed to house them. Also important to note is the motherboard's mounting hole pattern and how the different form factors use the same hole pattern. For instance, the mini ITX form factor uses four mounting holes, and if lined up with a standard ATX motherboard, the four mini ITX mounting holes will line up with the four upper leftmost mounting holes on the standard ATX motherboard. Or in other words, the smaller motherboard form factors utilize essentially the same pattern as a standard ATX motherboard. They just require less of the mounting holes because they are smaller. This means that cases that are designed to hold a standard ATX motherboard can also hold micro ATX and mini ITX motherboards. Although from an aesthetic standpoint, you may not want to put a mini ITX or micro ATX motherboard in a larger case, as it can look kind of funny to have such a small motherboard in such a big case. However, it's important to note that you cannot put a larger form factor motherboard in a smaller form factor case. For instance, if you want to build a PC inside of a mini ITX case, a standard ATX or micro ATX motherboard will not fit inside of it. You also can't put a standard ATX motherboard inside of a micro ATX case. Extended ATX motherboards work a little bit differently as they use the same mounting hole pattern as standard ATX motherboards, but since they are a bit wider, they may end up covering cable slots or running into other clearance issues in a standard ATX case that isn't designated to hold an extended ATX motherboard. So even though there are probably some standard ATX designated cases out there that can probably hold certain extended ATX motherboards, if you want to use an extended ATX motherboard in your build, it would be best to choose a case that is designed to specifically accommodate an eATX motherboard. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why would I want anything other than a standard ATX or extended ATX motherboard. If a bigger motherboard means more features, why would you get a smaller motherboard? And the answer to that is that there is a time and place for each motherboard form factor. Each of the four most popular form factors discussed in this video will make more sense for certain users depending on how they want to use their system and what their budget is. So in this section, we'll quickly go over the pros and cons of each form factor so that you'll have a better idea of which one meets your needs the best. Let's start with extended ATX motherboards. 
Extended ATX boards are best suited for extreme systems for a number of reasons. For starters, they pretty much always come with the high-end chipset on a given socket, which automatically means more features and better support for higher-end CPUs. Their larger size also allows them to offer more ports and features, more heat sinks, and a more robust power design. The downside of extended ATX motherboards are obvious though. With a larger footprint, there are fewer cases available that will hold them, and the cases that can hold them will typically cost more as well. Also, with more features, extended ATX motherboards cost more themselves, on average, than the other motherboard form factor options cost. So the extended ATX form factor comes with a double premium when you consider the cost of the board itself and the more expensive case options that can actually house this larger form factor. Unlike extended ATX motherboards, which almost always come with the best chipset available for a given socket, standard ATX motherboards can vary quite a bit in quality because they come in a range of chipsets. However, when compared to micro ATX and mini ITX motherboards, standard ATX boards typically come with better power designs overall, which just means they are usually better suited to handle more power hungry CPUs and are better for overclocking. Of course, there are standard ATX motherboards that come with weak VRMs, and there are micro ATX and mini ITX motherboards that come with stronger VRMs. But on average, standard ATX motherboards typically offer better power designs than micro ATX and mini ITX motherboards do. Standard ATX motherboards also offer more ports and features when compared to micro ATX and mini ITX motherboards, mainly because of their larger size and the better chipsets they typically come with. The downsides of standard ATX motherboards are basically the same as extended ATX motherboards. They typically cost more than micro ATX motherboards and they won't fit in most compact case options. So they're not often viable options for budget builds and they won't work for small form factor builds either. Micro ATX motherboards are on average the most limited of the motherboard form factors. This is because there aren't a lot of micro ATX motherboards that come with high-end chipsets. You'll usually only find micro ATX motherboards with mid-range or low-end chipsets, and that in itself means that micro ATX motherboards will typically come with less features and probably won't be suitable for a higher-end CPU option. The other downside of micro ATX motherboards, which we have mentioned earlier, is that they can look funny when installed inside of a standard ATX case. In builds that feature a standard ATX case with a see-through side panel and a micro ATX motherboard, it will look like everything is bunched up in the top left corner of the case. Of course, if aesthetics are of no concern to you, then that's not really a big deal. But for a lot of users who are at least taking aesthetics somewhat into consideration, that alone might be a deal breaker. To make this matter worse, there also aren't as many good micro ATX case options out there as there are standard ATX case options. Although I will say that there are more solid micro ATX case options out there now, than there was a few years ago. But not only do you have less micro ATX case options to choose between, but you also can't really use a standard ATX case with a micro ATX motherboard if you care about aesthetics too. It's not all negatives with micro ATX motherboards though. Despite their many downsides, the micro ATX form factor does have one thing going for it. Micro ATX motherboards are typically much cheaper than all of the other motherboard form factor options. In fact, for builders who are working with a tight budget, a micro ATX motherboard might be your only option. That is because it is rare to find a newer generation standard ATX or mini ITX motherboard available for under $100. However, there are usually a handful of sub $100 micro ATX motherboard options available across the different current gen CPU sockets. And in reality, if all you wanna do is build a standard PC for gaming, all you really need is a motherboard that will offer a good enough VRM to support a mid-range processor. And right now, there are a number of budget-friendly micro ATX motherboard options that will give you just that. Mini ITX motherboards really have one main purpose, to offer everything a system builder needs in as small of a form factor as possible. While larger cases have typically been the ideal go-to choice for serious PC builders, over the past decade, there has been a growing niche group of PC builders who have sought to go smaller with their systems. And for those users, the mini ITX form factor has become the preferred choice. One major positive for mini ITX motherboards over micro ATX motherboards, aside from mini ITX's smaller footprint, is that there are more mini ITX motherboards out there that feature the higher end chipset for a given CPU socket. So there's more potential to build a higher end system with the mini ITX form factor than there is with the micro ATX form factor. However, there is one major downside to mini ITX motherboards, and that is that they cost a lot more than micro ATX motherboards on average, and despite offering less features and flexibility, they cost similarly to standard ATX motherboards. Furthermore, building a mini ITX form factor system presents other downsides as well, 
including the fact that many ITX cases also often have a premium attached to them. Not to mention, on average, many ITX systems are more difficult to properly cool, they're harder to build due to limited working space, and depending on the mini ITX case you are considering, you'll have limited options for what kind of GPU and CPU cooler you can use. I think though that some of these limitations are actually why the mini ITX form factor has become so popular. Along with the cool compact cases that have hit the market over recent years, I really believe small form factor PC builders relish the challenge of building a system that can meet their needs while coming with as small of a footprint as possible. Ultimately, I personally wouldn't recommend a first time builder to start with a mini ITX build, but they're definitely fun to choose parts for and to build for users who are up for the challenge. After discussing the pros and cons of each of the most popular motherboard form factors, you probably already have a good idea of what motherboard form factor will be best for you. But if you are still unsure of which motherboard is right for you, let me quickly outline a few common use cases in which motherboard form factor makes the most sense for them. If you want to build a budget-friendly gaming PC, your best bet is probably to go with a Micro ATX motherboard. The reason being is that no components are going to have as big of an impact on your in-game performance as will your graphics card, processor, and memory. And so the general rule of thumb when building a budget-friendly gaming PC is to allot as much of your budget as is possible to those three components, and namely to your GPU. As a result, you'll have to sacrifice a bit of quality on your other components. Fortunately, Micro ATX motherboards are perfect for budget-friendly gaming PCs, as they still have all of the core features necessary to build a solid gaming PC. The only real difference between Micro ATX and Standard ATX motherboards in terms of building a basic gaming PC is that Standard ATX motherboards are more likely to come with a better VRM that can handle a higher-end CPU. However, since most budget-oriented builders won't have the money necessary to drop on a high-end CPU anyways, the only real reason for a budget builder to spend more to get a higher-end motherboard is if you plan on upgrading to a better CPU in the near future. And while standard ATX motherboards may offer more DIMM slots and M.2 ports, as well as more ports in general, for a basic gaming PC build, all you really need are two sticks of RAM and a single drive for storage. So ultimately, the Micro ATX form factor is usually the best motherboard form factor option for budget gaming PC builds, as a Micro ATX motherboard will come with everything you need and will likely come in at a more affordable price. Whether you're looking to build an extreme system or you just want to be able to utilize a high-end processor because you'll be using your system for CPU-intensive tasks, you're going to want a motherboard that offers a good enough power design to handle a higher-end CPU. And for this use case, your best bet will be either to choose a high-end standard ATX or extended ATX motherboard. Again, there are many ITX motherboards out there that come with higher-end chipsets, but even those will still come with limited VRMs when compared to the high-end ATX and extended ATX motherboards that are out there. If you want to build a PC that has a smaller footprint, whether because you want it to be mobile or you prefer a more minimalistic design, your best bet will be to go with a mini ITX or micro ATX motherboard. And obviously, if you want to go as small as possible, mini ITX motherboards will be the only real option for you. All right, there you have it. That is a general rundown on the main differences between extended ATX, standard ATX, micro ATX, and mini ITX motherboard form factors. Hopefully after watching this video, you now have a better idea on what form factor motherboard is right for your needs. If you want to dive further into what you should look for when choosing a motherboard, be sure to watch our series on how to choose parts for a gaming PC build. In any case though, that does it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you next time.